Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Starry Cosmic, and this is Alex. And we are Wicked Good Everything, and this is our coverage of the conference for E3. Specifically, EA. Unfortunately. We're starting out with Battlefront. <laughs> Battlefront 2. Uh, and um, it was very. People thought they were going to talk about the other Star Wars game. They didn't really. I think one of the people working on the game happened to be in the audience where they had them specifically planted in the audience. And he just kind of sat there and was like, yeah, it's a game. And then um, they talked about Battlefront and basically begged everyone to come play it because they're sorry. <laughs> and it's a little bit too late for that just because a game that would have so much potential coming from one of the biggest IPs, Star Wars, and I mean, it's a, a company with a track record of good Battlefield-style games. It is sad to see that it yeah. went the way it did. I mean, it's kind of like the whole Xbox thing, Xbox One thing over again. Once you betray that trust, it, you, it's really hard to get it back. We, we remember, we hold grudges. Mm -hmm. Gaming community's not, uh, you know, we're not very forgiving. Nope, and it's not like there's not another game to go out and buy and play in its days. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of battlefield S games... Uh, <laughs> EA showed us the new Battlefield 5 game this week, and like the rumors were telling us, the game's going to take place during World War II, so it's almost like a redux of Battlefield 1942, which is one of my favorite computer games, going back all the way into the early 2000s. And... I don't. I haven't seen enough of the game yet. Just based on the few gameplay trailers and the few of the cinematic trailers, how the game's going to turn out. So I'm a little apprehensive to give my uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on how this is going to turn out. But it looks like it will be fun to start. They did announce. I believe they did announce a battle royale mode as well, which. <laughs> uh, dep depending on how the battle royale plays out, I think it could be fun. Just because. Um, oh, it could definitely be fun, but I just, it's sort of like with the whole, uh, what do you call it there? With PUBG saying, oh, right. so, you know. Well, so PUBG's issue right now is that a lot of technical difficulties and there's a lot of bugs in the game that are forcing people out. So what I think would be nice is that this Battlefield Battle Royale could be a realistic game for people who prefer the PUBG style to the Fortnite style, but also want a smooth game, and I think... DICE's uh, Frostbite engine is more than up to the challenge to take on a Battle Royale game. Yeah, and I mean, basically this is why PUBG was trying to sue Fortnite, is that they're concerned that their game, instead of you know being able to make their game better, because that would make too much sense, they're instead going to try and prevent other people from making it, which clearly isn't working. <laughs> Not at all. So the biggest game that people were, or are excited for, comes from Bioware, of course. And it's Anthem, which I'm, I'm pretty excited. I mean, it's sort of like this universe that's between Mass Effect and like Dragon Age. It's got a lot of really cool and interesting concepts. Um, I think it's interesting the uh, class system isn't like permanent. It's based off the suit, so you can change it at any time. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the class you're playing, you can switch to a different class. So it doesn't matter where you are. And I mean, it's a Bioware game, so it, as long as it's not as bad as the previous Mass Effect game, I think it's a shoe one to be good. <laughs> not, not a very high bar to pass. The biggest um, announcement for them, though, I think, wound up being Unravel, because they are not only announced the sequel to Unravel 2, which is a local co-op game, um, they released it right then and there. Um, I have played it some over on um, my personal Twitch channel, and so far I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's really smooth, and even if you're playing by yourself, it very much feels like one character rather than two separate characters. So I would like to play with another person at some point, because I think it's it's a really chill game when you're not worried about fish or birds eating you, but <laughs> other than that, it's it's been pretty good. Great. I do really... I. I haven't played the game, but I do really like from the trailers the tone of the game, the music that's behind it, and the um, the sets that are behind all the levels that people are playing on. It's a really good looking game. 
Yeah, it's very different from anything else EA is doing. You know, it's very artistic and very right. the music's very calming. Um, it's a beautiful game, even though it's really a two D platformer. Right. But it's there's so much going on in the background and the foreground, and there's so much story going on. It's it's really really good and enjoyable. So if you haven't played Unravel, I fully recommend it, and the second one as well. <laughs> so Sea of Solitude, we also got a very good look at it. Um, essentially, it's a game about um, a universe where loneliness turns you into a monster. It eats you from the inside out. And it's about this girl who's sort of going through this transformation and trying to, essentially, from my understanding, um, not, you know, fill that gap of loneliness. Um, it's a very, very artsy game that has to deal with um, a lot of emotions. Uh, it it looks really pretty and it's I think it's like low it's low res graphics like that kind of style so it's not gonna be like crazy like no it's in its, the woods, it's, its, its own it's, yeah. artistic form of graphics so the game still does look very pretty yeah but it's not not high fidelity right that looks like uh, the Wind Waker a little bit yeah that's yeah. what I say it would yeah. look like except even like even with less detail, like there's almost this blurriness and it's very much meant to connect with you on an emotional level rather than um, as through gameplay. Like I'm sure the gameplay will be really good too, but it's very much meant to be an emotional <coughs> journey. So um, while we're on the topic of artsy games like Unravel and Sea of Solitude, um, I think this is a really good time to bring up that um, it's kind of interesting seeing EA trying to come back with sort of these artsy games because, you know, that's where EA really started in trying to bring artists forward and celebrate the artistic side of video games. Um, so it, it's kind of like this, we they're in this weird place almost where they want to, they want to do more artsy games, but they're almost afraid to. Right. So... In honesty, they'd be foolish to just give up their big franchise games, but the fact that they're branching out is almost a light in the clouds for this kind of company. If they can balance between the two of artsy games and really triple A blockbuster games, they can really find a good path to flow down. Yeah, and I mean, it's definitely, um, with artsy games like Solitude and Unravel, they definitely come from a place of passion in a place of um, artistic, you know, uh, artistic value, I guess you could say. But it's very, I think they do want to return to not just doing the cash cow with like Sims and, you know, Battlefield and stuff. They want to create games that people will generally love um, and, you know, connect with emotionally. It's just, it's kind of scary because, you know, we're in a place where you could cat spend millions on a game and it might not even sell. Um, I think unwrap with the original Unravel, it definitely reopened that gate. Um, especially when they announced it at E3, I remember that was one of the most talked about moments in the entire conference because it was just, it was just so pure and just so passionate. Um, it was clearly you know this developer who wanted to convey this story of love, and. It, it was really good. It was really positive. So I think that's I think that pretty much covers um, our uh, E3 or EA. Yep. That pretty much covers the EA conference. So. Um, oh, and uh, last but not least, we wanted to talk about FIFA and Madden. Or you know we could just I think not. Um, so EA, uh, that was it. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. We are Wicked Good Everything. I'm Sorry Cosmic. I'm Alex. And. Um, Hope you'll join us for more coverage of EA, or E3, not EA, because they're done. <laughs> All right, see ya. See you next time.